we are now starting with the human heart. Let us first understand the location, size, shape and then we'll take up the structure. Human heart is located in the mediastina. Mediastinum is the central space in the chest or thoracic cavity which is between the two lungs. So this is the area where it is located and it fits into cardiac notch. Cardiac notch is that depression in the left lung where this heart fits. So it fits in cardiac notch of the left lung. So in the thoracic cavity, if we see the left lung, there's a slight depression like this, which we call the cardiac notch and the heart fits in here and it is between the two lungs, that is mediastinum. Now size wise, if we talk of the size, normally when we use the term, what is the size of the heart, it is considered as the size of your tight fist. If you make a tight fist of your non-working hand, that is the size. And shape is slightly triangular. Triangular in the sense the upper part is wider and then it gets narrower. But we have to remember that whenever we talk of this wide part, that is the base of the heart. Because if you remember when we talked about the heart of amphibians, we said that it has evolved from the heart of fishes. Fishes heart was tubular, it was like this and the upper compartment was ventricle, lower was auricle. So as evolution took place, it became like this, the auricles came up. So the upper part is known as the base and the lower part is known as the apex. So when we say triangular, the upper part which is the base of the heart is wider and the lower part which is the apex of the heart is narrower. The weight of heart, it varies. It is different in case of males and females. So in males and in females. In females, the heart is of slightly less weight. It is 230 to 280 grams. Whereas in case of males, it is 280 to 340 grams. That means the heart of males is heavier as compared to the heart of females. If we see the heart from outside, we see the shape as we were talking about the triangular shape. The shape looks like this, slightly triangular and it is turning or it is bent towards the left side. It is bent towards the left. This is how we see it from the outside. But when we draw the internal structure, we draw totally different uh, shape. So this is how the shape looks, slightly different. This is the apex and this part is known as the base. And when we see it from outside, we find that there are depressions. The depressions are, there is one depression which is like this, which separates the upper half or upper part from the lower part. This is known as coronary sulcus. This separates the auricles from the ventricles. And then we find one more depression which is like this. And this depression separates the two auricles. This is known, sorry, two ventricles. This depression is known as interventricular sulcus. Sulcus word is normally used for depressions. So when we see the heart from outside, we don't see all those four compartments. What we see is a depression. The upper part is there and the lower part is there. So there is a groove kind of a thing. And one groove is 
separating the upper part from the lower part. This is known as coronary sulcus. It is auriculoventricular separation. So we can also call it auriculoventricular sulcus. And the next one is between the two ventricles and it is mostly on one side. We say that human beings are bilaterally symmetrical. That means if we cut our body into two equal halves vertically, we should get perfectly two equal halves. But that's not going to happen because our heart is slightly bent towards the left side. So if you see here, the apex basically comes on the left side. So we say that we are bilaterally symmetrical, but if we cut exactly from the middle, we may not get the equal two halves of our Heart. So from outside what is visible are two depressions or grooves. One is coronary sulcus and other is between the two ventricles. And now if we see what exactly is the wall of the heart made up of. So now we are actually talking about the wall first and then we will take up the complete internal structure. So let us see the structure of the wall first. Now let us talk about the wall. The wall of heart is made up of three layers. Wall of the heart has three layers. The outermost is known as epicardium. The middle one is known as myocardium. And the inner one is known as endocardium. We will go from inside out so that we understand the structure. Endocardium as we said the innermost and it is made up of simple squamous epithelium. So this is the layer that we are talking of. Simple squamous epithelium. This is endocardium, the innermost layer. Then comes myocardium and myocardium is made up of cardiac muscles. So this is the second layer and this is the thickest layer. It is made up of cardiac muscles. Cardiac muscles are highly specialized muscles for Contraction of the heart which has, to, which has to take place continuously in a rhythmic manner. So this middle layer is myocardium. This inner one is endocardium. This uh, endocardium as we have written here is simple squamous epithelium and myocardium is made up of cardiac muscles. Now coming to the outermost layer. The outermost layer that is epicardium is divided into two parts. One layer is known as serous pericardium and the next one is known as fibrous pericardium. These two together make the uh, complete outermost layer. Now if you have to talk about the serous pericardium, the serous pericardium is again having two layers, an outer layer and an inner layer. The inner means we are talking from inside of the heart. This inner one, inner from the heart is known as visceral pericardium and the outer one is known as parietal pericardium and these two together make the serous pericardium. Serous pericardium and both are made up of simple squamous epithelium. That means visceral is also simple epithelium and parietal is also simple epithelium. And then outside is the fibrous one. And this fibrous, as the name tells us, it is made up of a fibrous tissue. That is 
fibrous pericardium. So now we have three layers. The one which we have shown with this red, that is endocardium. It is made up of simple squamous epithelium, single layer of cells. Then comes the thickest layer of the heart, that is myocardium. And it is made up of cardiac muscles, specialized muscles with gap junctions, so that the rhythmic contraction of heart takes place without any problem. Then comes the outermost layer. This complete, this complete, that means the two which we have drawn with blue and the black one. This is epicardium. Epicardium has two parts. One is called serous pericardium, which is two layer. The inner one, inner means closer to the heart, is visceral and outer one is parietal. And outside this is a fibrous, thin fibrous capsule, which is going to provide it strength. Now, between these visceral and parietal pericardial layers is present a fluid. This is known as pericardial fluid. This pericardial fluid, it varies in volume normally and its normal volume is about 15 milliliters. And this pericardial fluid performs some important functions like so if we write functions of pericardial fluid, the function, the first one, it acts as a lubricant, acts as a lubricant. That means when the heart is actually moving, then that frictionless movement is helped by this pericardial fluid. It protects the heart from mechanical shocks. And mechanical shocks like not very serious kind of mechanical shocks, some jerky movements. So protects the heart from jerks or mechanical uh, shocks we can write. Mechanical shocks. So th these are the two main functions of the pericardial fluid. And this complete structure makes the wall of the heart. Inner, endo, middle, myo and outermost is epicardium. Epicardium has two layers, serous pericardium and uh, fibrous pericardium. Normally, when we just say pericardium, we are actually talking about the serous pericardial layer because this also has the fluid that is pericardial fluid. Normal volume which varies around 15 milliliters and it performs two main functions. One is of lubrication and second is a protection of the heart from the mechanical shocks or jerks. So this is the wall and now we will talk about the internal structure of the heart.